Good evening, BDGMA. It is such an honor and a privilege to come to you tonight to speak to you during your Ulta experience. What I want to speak to you tonight on is the importance of the anointing. Now, I know many persons, they would join a dance ministry because they're gifted. Maybe it's a hobby. Some see it as a means to escape their home and what's going on in their home. And some see it as a therapy. It's therapeutic for a lot of persons to dance. But the primary or the main reason for dancing or ministering, especially as it relates in church dance, should be to manifest an anointing and to serve God through your gifts and your talents. Remember now, all good and perfect gifts are given by God. It comes from God. The gift and the talent that you have, you would say, well, I got it from my mama. Oh, my daddy, he was an awesome dancer. My mother was an awesome dancer. But the gift that you have, make no mistake about it, comes to you from God. And with every gift that is given, there is a responsibility. There's a responsibility that comes with being gifted. There's a responsibility. And so when you're ministering in dance or when you're dancing, the first thing that you should, you should do or want to do is to present yourself as a living sacrifice. You should want to want to be effective. You should want to serve God through your gifts. I often tell people that when you mount a stage, when you would go to an, a concert or an event, wherever it is that you would go to minister, there is a responsibility that lies on you, your group, whoever is ministering. To serve God through your giftings. My thing is, a lot of persons, a lot of ministries, I would say, they're excited to open a dance ministry. They're excited to expand um, their youth department and all of the above. But forgetting or neglecting the fact that there is a charge that is placed upon you. There is a charge that is placed upon every department, every arm of the church, every arm of the ministry. You may say, well, I'm not a part or my dad's ministry is not a part of a church. But if you are a praise dancer or you are a Christian dance group, you are still a part of the church, the body of Christ. And so by extension, you are still serving God through the gifts. <laughs> wow. You know, the thing about it is I'm reminded of a lot of persons that would come and they would be excited to join the dance ministry. And I would say about two to three weeks later, they would have a look on their face like, yeah, I came to be on dance to minister and to dance, but I wasn't expecting all of this. Because they didn't realize that at Beyond Dance, you would have to prepare yourself to serve God. You would have to be a part of a mentorship program that will equip you. With the, th with the tools necessary, the things that is necessary to get yourself in alignment with the will of God concerning your life. Wow. A lot of times we go to concerts and we go to events and people are ministering and they are so gifted, they are so skilled. It is such a beautiful rendition, but no power. Everybody clap them up. Everybody clap them up and applaud them. Good job. Good job. Everybody's screaming for them and cheering their name on, cheering their team name on and, and, and clap it. And I'm just saying, having an awesome time. But the thing is, or the question is, 
was God. Was God being pleased? Was God pleased with your rendition? Was God pleased with your with your performance? Because most of the time, that's exactly all that it is. Performance. How do you know when it's performance? It's performance when there was no anointing, no one lives was changed, no one heart was touched, the atmosphere remained the same. The anointing during dance is of utmost importance because the Bible declares that the anointing destroys the yoke. What yoke? Whatever a person is going on, going, going through, whatever is going on in a person's life, it's a yoke. It is something that they carry. It's a burden that they carry. How do you know that God is not dependent on your dance ministry or you as a personal or soloist to bring change to manifest an anointing that will bring deliverance, that will bring healing, that will bring salvation, that will bring restoration, that will stop that person from leaving out of that concert or that event and going out there and committing suicide. How do you know that the anointing on your life or on the group or on the ministry is not designed to break the yokes of somebody that was about to go there and commit a crime? How do you know that some young girl in there that was in that concert was contemplating going out and having un unprotected sex or sex at any point? How do you know that God did not design your dance ministry, your ministry in dance to be at that particular event to break the, the yokes and to, to and loose the shackles of some people inside that particular event? How do you know that God was not dependent on you? How do you know the responsibility for what was about to take place in some person's lives in that service was not depending on your anointing or your obedience? Listen. Listen. Our ministry in dance is to bring change. When you mount those pulpits, when you put on those uniforms, you're saying, I am a minister. I stand as the mouthpiece of God. And I speak and I declare what God is saying through the song that I am ministering. My movements become prophetic. My movements become evangelical. There is an anointing. There is an anointing that God wants to minister, administer through the arts of dance. It's very important. How, how, but how do I, how do I prepare myself? You're asking that. Well, I'm so happy that you asked. How to prepare yourself is to spend time with God. Spend time in prayer. Allow him to wash you through his word. Get in the word of God. Find some kind of time to build a relationship with God. And he will teach you how to bring your body under subjection. He will teach you how to walk holy and circumspect before him. He will teach you. He will groom you. And let me tell you. God works with us according to our ability. You don't have to act like the next person. You don't have to want to have the same relationship with the next person. Have God will deal with you individually. Because you are individual. There are times that we forget, we forget who God has called us. Listen, the word of God says no flesh shall glory in his presence. Flesh can't please God. Flesh can't please God. And as you, as you continue with your altar experience for the next couple of weeks, I want to encourage all of you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice oh well i ain't doing nothing wrong i'm not having sex i'm not doing this i'm not doing that your bodies your spirit your soul and your physical body present them to god that's what god is saying present them to god present your mind your will and your emotion that's your soul present that to god would you think how you feel would you choose to do present that to god present your spirit your communion your intuition, your first present that to God. What you're doing in your spare time. What you do, who are you communing with? And your physical body. What you what you do with it? Where do you go? The things that you're partaking in. Listen, 
It sounds hard. But let me tell you, once you spend time in the presence of God, all the things. That's a song we used to sing as a child. And we would say, look in the face of God. Turn your eyes upon him. And the things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. As you come closer to the glory of God, all the things that this world has to offer will begin to fade away in comparison to what God is giving you. Somebody's depending on you. As you minister throughout your altar experience, prepare yourself. As you continue your journey as a dance minister, prepare yourself to transform lives, to change hearts, to change minds, to ransom families, to save young girls, young boys. Listen. You are anointed. Walk in it. God has called you. You are great. You are powerful. But only in the hands of God. God bless you beyond dance. It's been a pleasure speaking to all of you. And I pray that you would listen to this as a reminder that God has called you a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a holy, you're a peculiar person. You're different. You're set aside. The mere fact that you're a part of a dance ministry, you are being called and chosen and set aside to bring glory to God. I don't care what dance ministry you're a part of. You've been chosen and set aside to bring glory to God. Do not contaminate yourself. Allow him to continue to set you aside for his honor and for his glory. And listen to me. When you serve God, when you walk up right before him, there's no good thing that he would hold from you. It just get better from here. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.